Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to be setting it up so we can actually touch stuff on the screen. We'll be detecting touch inputs and then we'll be shooting a raycast towards what we touched and interacting with that object in some way. Uh, what we're going to be doing with that interaction is actually changing the color of what we touched to a random new color. So, what we're going to do now is go to our scripts folder. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to create a new C Sharp script called Color Changer. And what I'm going to do is also just attach this to our main camera here. And then we can open up the script inside of Visual Studio. Okay, so to begin, we are going to actually just have one function. And that one function is going to be the update function, which gets called every single frame of the game. And this is actually the only function that we're going to be needing and using in this script. So, inside of the update function, what do we want to do? So, the first thing we want to do in the update function is check, are we touching the screen? So we can go if input to access the actual input uh, class of Unity, which has many things such as keyboard inputs, mouse inputs, and of course, touch inputs. So we'll go if input dot touch count. If this touch count is greater than zero, so if there are more than zero touches on the screen, and the input dot touches. Now, touch input dot touches is a array of all the different uh, touches that are currently on the screen. So to access the first, or if there is only one touch on the screen, we can just access the uh, zero element, the first element of the array. If that touch dot phase, now there's also a phase for a touch, and there are multiple different phases, such as began, moved, uh, stationary, released. So if this touch phase equals equals touch phase dot began, so if there is more than one touch on the screen, and that touch it has just begun. If this is the frame that this touch has just touched the screen, then what we're going to do is create a raycast from where we touched on the screen, first of all. So we'll create a new ray here, and this is going to be equal to our camera.main.screenpoint to ray. And the point on the screen we want to create a raycast from is going to be the input dot touches, the first touch, uh, dot position. So this is going to create a raycast uh, on the screen from where we touched, and it's just going to be shooting at, at whatever we are pointing at. Uh, since we are going to be hitting an object and we need to know information about that object, we're also going to create a raycast hit uh, object here, which is going to store all the info of whatever we hit. And finally, down here, we can shoot the raycast by going if physics.raycast. Uh, we can enter in our array, and then we want to send this out to the hit of pretty much whatever we hit. We want to send it to hit. And so if we shoot that raycast, what we want to first check of all is did we hit something? So if hit.collider doesn't equal null, if we did hit something, then what we want to do is change this object's mesh, mesh renderer color. Um, so I'm going to create a color variable here. I'm just going to call this our new color. And this is just going to be equal to a new color and we'll just give it a random red, green, and blue values. So I'll just give it a random, oops, random dot range between 0, 0.0 and 1.0 because this color class here, it takes in its RGB and A values, uh, not as 0 to 255 as it would be in the editor. Uh, it's actually between 0 and 1. So we'll do that. Then actually, I'll just copy this random dot range here and paste this for the green and blue values. And for the alpha, I'm just going to set this to 1 and end that off like so. So now we have a new random color that can really be anything on the color wheel. And what we want to do now is set this to the object we hit. We want to set it to its mesh renderer. And for that, we can just go hit.collider.getComponent. We want to get the mesh renderer component, which uh, is pretty much the component that renders the mesh, uh, applies the material, and so on. And with this, we want to just access the material variable and access the color of that material and set this to be our new color. So great, that'll all work. Um, but since we're in the editor and not actually on a mobile device, we won't actually be able to test this out. So what we can do is actually also down here, create a different version that will actually work uh, on the desktop, work inside the Unity editor. And for this, we're just going to be checking for mouse inputs. So here we'll just go if input dot get mouse button down. Um, if the mouse button was zero, which is the left mouse button. So on the frame that we push our left mouse button down, 
we pretty much want to do exactly the same as we've done up here. So I'll just copy this, paste it in here, and I just want to change input.touches to be input.mouse position like so. And something else you can do in Unity is make it so that only certain code is actually ran or actually is actually compiled uh, depending on the platform that you're playing it on. So what we can do is actually just above this if statement here for the uh, mouse inputs, we can go hashtag if and then a space we can go unity underscore editor and then after this if statement here we can just go hashtag end if. Now what this does is basically makes it so everything between this hashtag if and this hashtag end if will only be compiled so the game will only recognize this if we are in the platform of Unity Editor. So once we build this to our mobile device, this code here won't even be looked, it won't even exist really in the final game. It won't be recognized. And this is a great way if you do have something like this because uh, mouse inputs can also be detected on touch inputs. So this would be uh, quite conflicting if this was included inside of the mobile build. All right, so that script ready to go. We can go back to the editor wait for that to compile, wait for our last to go, we can press play, and when we select a object, we should be able to change its color. So, I'll click on the ball here, and as you can see, it changed. We can click on this over here, we can just click on a bunch of different things, and the color will change. So, we can unpress play, and actually what I'm going to do is move the camera a bit closer, since it is kind of far at the moment. So, I'll just move it down like so. And, yeah, there we go. So in the next lesson, we are going to be testing this out on our device. Uh, we'll be first of all building this to an Android device, and then the lesson after that will be for all you iOS users. Uh, we'll be going over how to build this uh, to iOS, how to set it up through Xcode, and have it on your device. So I'll see you all in the next lesson.